structuralism or when we start reading about literary criticism in general, we have to start with structuralism. So this is the mother of all or the father of all. Why? Because the, the word itself says it gives a proper pattern or structure to entire uh, school of criticism. So what we do in this school of criticism, number one, we try to understand not just an individual text that you are going to analyze. We try to understand how this particular individual text, you know, uh, confirms or goes against, uh, you know, all the underlying structure of literary elements. So in order to explain that, I have to give an example. Okay. So we are starting with a fresh school of criticism. Let's go with an example. Then we'll understand. So whenever you are say, you know, you say that I'm going to do a structuralist analysis of a text, right? So what do you do? First, you study that particular individual text, you know, a poem, a particular poem, a particular novel or drama. Then you say how this particular novel goes against the established tradition of novels or their tradition or how it conforms to the already existing structure. So either it goes against it or it, it follows it, right? And ultimately you say, these are the uh, shared structures or elements by this individual text. Claude Lévi-Strauss, French anthropologist. So this French anthropologist extended Saussure to anthropology. So this is how structuralism became a broad field. When we say structuralism, it started with linguistics, with Saussure in Swiss. Then it included linguistics. Then it included anthropology. So this is a theory. When we say theory, it can be applied to other fields as well in some, in some contexts. So uh, Lévi-Strauss, uh, sorry, uh, yes, Lévi-Strauss in his famous book, The Elementary Structures of Kinship, one of his famous book. So his methodology, structuralist methodology. So he studied kinship in general because he is more bothered about anthropology, study of humankind. And when we say humans, we have certain structures, right? Social structures and also norms. And he focused more on kinship, right? Whom do we marry or our relationship with the mother, father, kind of a thing. And there is a, a chapter called the marriage of cousins in this book. The marriage of cousins, it differs from culture to culture. In some cultures, we marry our cousins. In some culture, they don't marry their cousins at all. And some culture, we can marry our cross cousins, not the immediate one. There are a lot of things, all right? So he talked about that. And this is actually a structuralist analysis. What is allowed and what is not allowed? In linguistic, certain sentence is allowed, all right? Which is practicable. For instance, Chomsky said, a certain sentence is not allowed, all right? Avan Vandal, I mean, whenever we speak in Tamil, we have this ending, suffix. All, it refers to feminine, not a male one. When we say avan, he, you, you have to go with some other ending, male ending, suffix, not just female suffix. So that is not allowed in Tamil, right? Similar way, in a culture or in a particular family, certain marriage is prohibited. You can't marry your sister or you can marry something else, right? But you can, of course, uh, on the one kind, you can marry a certain cousin. I mean, um, father's sister's daughter is okay but father's brother's daughter is not okay so one is more like a sister another is marriageable cousin so we have this concept of marriageable cousin non-marriageable cousin both are cousins sisters but in a way but one is allowed in this culture but in other culture it may not be allowed right in tamil okay or india okay but within religion i think there are changes so he talked about that so cross cousin is to be distinguished from the prohibition of Insist and insist within family, you can't get married. Those days, okay, beginning, origin. They married their own sisters or brothers. Now, it is, uh, it is considered a negative relationship. So you can't think of an Oedipus kind of a thing, right? You can't marry your mother or sister. That is prohibited in this system, modern system. Then positive relationship, what is allowed? Like this a sentence, all right? So this is allowed, okay? So this is how... Claude Lévi-Strauss expanded that idea of structuralism to anthropology. Then he came up with this, uh, some of his concepts. So one of his famous work, 1962, The Savage Mind. 
and he came up with this concept called bricolage so c o l a g when when we say bricolage it's a kind of uh, uh, your ability competence okay so your competence to create something with whatever you hand whatever it at, at, at hand so for instance primitive people so when they travel they don't carry everything with us with them you know when they travel whatever they get you know they make a tent or you know they shelter and they move on so whatever at hand they had the ability to create something out of it that ability that means is called bricolage you can remember the word art called collage when we say collage you put different things together kind of a painting or a kind of art that is collage so that ability or this means is called bricolage and levi strauss said that's what the primitive mind had the earlier people now the modern people they do not go for this they need some measurement to create something so he came up with something called this word bricolor b r i c o l e u r bricolor the word uh, now in french is called prayer primitive so that is the basic meaning what is the old sense of this word when we say old sense bricolor old meaning it is associated with ball games billiards hunting shooting riding especially its movement some extraneous movement so for instance when you hit a ball sometimes it doesn't go in the straight way sometimes there is a curve or it rebounds sometimes a dog strays a horse swerves you know moving away from your natural course that is called bricolor from its direct course to avoid an obstacle right so you have that competence not to go straight okay we have to move this side so that is the basic meaning of bricolor now when we say bricolor current sense it refers to someone someone who works with his hands or ha- her hands uses devious means compared to that of a craftsman when we say a craftsman right an artist they need certain measurements like a modern engineer when we give ask an engineer he will say this much quantity of cement or you know a gravel or measurement everything but if you ask some ordinary mason without measurement he will just go and build it and that is bricolor in a earlier primitive mind so people with this bricolor mind or bricolor they have this uh, task you know what, you give them something whatever at hand they create something out of it it's like cooking sometimes only our mothers can do that or some fathers sometimes we say no no in order to do this i need that one this one you know the modern chef and sometimes uh, there's nothing at home some few things and we create something out of a uh, food out of uh, things so that is bricolor you create something with whatever is available whereas engineer cannot do that and what is this has to do with criticism a critic is like that a critic has nothing but words right so as i told you before describing a language in your own language is tough describing a tamil word in tamil is tough english word in english is tough similar way look at the position of a critic a critic has nothing but the text and has to comment on that so which is tough whereas if you go across fields you can easily describe but describing words through words is tough a bricolor a critic is like that what is available at hand with words you have to come up with some idea about that particular text or across text okay then these are some of his uh, famous works uh, the structural study of myth so from the title you can get to know his idea the structural study of myth and totemism t o t e m i s m what is a totem totem uh, when it comes to primitive society we had this pole wooden pole uh, with something uh, you know etched there uh, people worship there it all right so that is called a totem totem worshiping right so he talked about that then uh, four volumes uh, collectively called mythologics so number one is very important the raw and the cooked the raw and the cooked refers to nature versus culture raw nature cooked culture okay then from honey to ashes then the origin of table manners see this is how structuralism gets expanded 
So we started off with the linguistics. Now we are talking about anthropology and common everyday table manners. So if you are sitting at a table at a hotel, so how do you behave, all right? Then the naked man. So this is a four collection. And this is one of his another famous work, Myth and Meaning. So if you're interested in uh, Levi-Strauss, maybe you can start with one of the books, maybe Myth and Meaning, right? It, it sounds simple or understandable.